We can't change people. But God can. And for those believers that are watching and listening, you even though sometimes your words ain't, you know, won't change somebody, your lifestyle, the consistency of your lifestyle will bring respect, will bring honor and glory to God. You keep doing what the Lord has called you to do. You keep living holy. You keep living righteous. You keep living upright. You keep serving the Lord. Good morning and God bless you all. Welcome to another episode of Create with Kendra, a place where you can be inspired, challenged, and changed. I hope everyone is having a fantastic week. And if you're not, I pray that this episode um, brightens it up a little bit brighter. You know what I'm saying? I hope that starting on Wednesday that you can glide through the west of the the west the rest of your week with a smile on your face. So for those that are new to um this show, I want to give everyone an opportunity to have their voice heard on Create with Kendra. I just don't be coming on here running my mouth on things I just want to be talking about, but I extend this con, you know, this space to converse with all of the listeners that want to participate and get their questions answered. So Unassociated and Create with Kendra have provided a space for everyone to be heard. So if you have a topic of discussion or any questions that you have that you want answered here on the show, you can go to www.unassociated.com slash ask Kendra for more information. You can submit your questions or topics of discussion via audio, or you can type them in, and I will be so excited, extremely glad to answer your questions and to talk about your topics that you submit. So if that is you, you can head on over to www.unassociated.com slash askkendra for more information. Okay, speaking of Ask Kendra, today's episode is based on a question that was sent in um, or a suggested topic of discussion. Um, A listener wrote in and said, hi, Kendra, I love your episode on Are You a Friendly Christian? I've had um, a hard time building long lasting friendships. I value it and cherish people, but I don't get that in return. I still continue to show grace and represent Christ in the best way that I can. It's definitely hard, girl. I get it. (laughs) I think a good topic for next um, the next episode could be discerning friendships and relationships and not giving up on people so fast. Uh, that's what God does for us daily. It's definitely not easy. So thank you so much for sending in this request. I cannot wait to jump on it. Um, so first things are first. Um, I'm going to share with you all a, a bit of a experience that I've had with friendships and just just off jump I want to encourage those people that feel lonely if you feel like you don't have the friendships that you see on social media that other people are sharing in or the friendships that you see at church that other people are sharing in that you feel alone that you don't feel you know supported or what have you, it is very normal to to sometimes just be by yourself because what I had to grow and understand, for just, just being young, like friendships have always been really interesting for me um, and the fact that I was, I, I, I accepted Jesus at nine years old and I told y'all this. And so I was very, to the world, odd. Right. Imagine a a young girl, nine years old at recess trying to evangelize <laughs> to the kids. <laughs> wow. That was me. That was me. Right. And so there was there there would be a lot of people that I would consider friends that did not feel comfortable like growing up. Like becoming a, a, a young adult, adolescence, teenager years and all that stuff, a lot of my friends would not feel comfortable being 
who they are in front of me or showing me all of them um, because they, they, they feared um, being judged and they, 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 they didn't want to confront their, their sin or what they were doing. Because when I came around, there was just something that, that struck them that was like, I can't release, you know, release this, (laughs) this, you know, this mess. Right. And I would always, I would be so bothered when people would tell me that, or when people would pull back from me, I'm like, I'm not judging you. I'm not, you know, just, just be yourself. And it wasn't, it wasn't me. And this is what my best friend told me when she was, you know, in the world, she told me, she said, Kendra, it's not you that I don't necessarily want to be around. It's the God in you. And I feel like being around you, I have, I, I have to, I feel like God is confronting me about the things that I'm doing, being around you. And I was trying to convince her. It's not me. She said, I know Kendra, it's not you, but it's the God in you that I don't want to confront. It's the God in you that I don't want to see or don't want to check my sin. And so I had to learn that people are not always going to be comfortable around me. And it's not that I'm deliberately trying to intimidate them. It's not. And for those people that know what I'm talking about, Cause if you know, you know, um, I just want to encourage you that it's not you all the time. It's not. So, um, that's that. But I really want to break this question down. This is a very loaded and interesting question that was sent in. Um, there's a, I just want to pull a couple of sentences out. So um, one part of the question says, I have a hard time building long lasting friendships. So first thing I want to say about that is we have to really take out the time to, to see what are we building our friendships on? What foundational principles, morals are we building our our friendships on? Are we building them on commonalities of we watch the same TV show, we like the same food, we from the same city, we like going to the club. Like, what are you building your friendship on? And when we think about, and just, and think about it, like for real, like your best friends or your friends that you hang out with, like how did that come to be? And when we evaluate those foundational um layers then we can determine like is this going to be long lasting is this going to be seasonal and sometimes we can't look at our foundation and see if it's going to be long lasting or if it's going to be seasonal but we just have to wait and see that's the thing that's the thing that gets us tripped up it's like we always want to know the end at the beginning And it's tough going through the middle. It's tough going through the process. So uh, I get it, but I get it though. I get it. So really look at what are the foundational, um, like layers that you have in your friendships. Really, really look at those things. Um, And that really determines Is this going to be long lasting? Is it going to be seasonal? And the thing about it is seasonal friendships does not mean the friendship was bad. I don't know. There's like this narrative of like, I thought we was friends. You know, you change, you different now. Okay. Yeah. That's called life. It's called growth. It's called progression. And that's what we want to do. But not all the time when you, when you grow, not everyone is going to grow in the same direction. And it is okay. It is okay to have seasonal friendships. And I can say that the seasonal friendships that I have, I don't talk bad about them. I ain't going to run their name through the mud. I ain't going to say nothing, you know, scandalous about them. 
They were my friend for that season. And then I grew one way and they grew another. And it's okay. God will give you who you need when you need them. He will. And so just just pray about it. And if you feel like you have absolutely no one, literally just 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 go to the Lord and tell him what you are concerned with. Tell him what it is because I I can recall being a teen and just crying and being excuse me and being so sad. I remember losing what I thought at the time was losing a best friend that I had for about 16 years. And I thought, I'm losing her. I'm just crying. But the reality was we grew in two different directions. And it's okay. I still love her. You know, I don't I don't talk to her or I don't see her much at all. It's been years since I've seen her. But if I did, I'd still have my arms out. I'd still embrace her. I'd still love on her. But we have to be okay that sometimes we are going to have people in our lives for a season. Um And for those and for those folks that are that need answers cuz sometimes we 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 think about things and we don't address them or bring them to light it would be a great opportunity to see if you have a friendship that you you have some questions about to go to that person and to just have a conversation about the direction of your friendship, the growth or the change of the friendship. Um, Go to last week's episode, y'all, after you listen to this one, okay? Um, And I had a a licensed um, therapist on last week's episode, um, the amazing Mrs. Tiffany Hunter, and she gave us skills and tools to to approach conversations, to... um, have productive conversations, right? And so go back to last week's episode, pull some of those tools out and go to whoever it is that you want to have a conversation with just to evaluate what's going on in your friendship. It's okay to talk to folks. It's not always what you say, but it's how you say it. So let's get, and, I, and I'm speaking to myself too, because I'm a person that I be in my head a whole lot. And so I'm trying to get out of my head and get into conversation. So if that's you and you need to just talk it out with a particular friend, go ahead and do that. Go ahead and do that. Um, Another thing I wanted to talk about from this question was what it means to not give up on people. Um, This listener wrote in that... I think a good topic for the next episode could be discerning friendships and relationships and not giving up on people so fast. Okay. Um, but I I want to pose the question and I may not have an answer to this, but this is just something for us to think about. Um, me too, to think about what, what does it mean to really give up on somebody? If you really done all that you could do, if you put your best foot forward, if you didn't have conversations and opened the floor up for dialogue and, and resolution, and but there's still no budging, I would not say that there is a, I would, this is what I would say. There is a difference between giving up and there is a difference between releasing And I would say, why? Because giving up is, I don't want to put no effort into this. And, you know, that's your choice. It's, you know, neither here nor there. If you say, I don't want to put no effort into this, that's fine. That's cool. But if you release somebody because you've done everything that you can, that you could have done, it's different. And I want people to uh, to to really listen when I say it is 
crucial that we put up boundaries for people. That we set standards for folks in our lives. I don't care if it's a sister, a brother, a friend, a neighbor, a cousin, a boyfriend, a whoever. Your kids. You have to set boundaries for people. Because if you don't, they'll cross you. And they'll be okay crossing you again. I heard, um, shout out to Judge Lynn Tola. Let me see if I can get this quote right. She said, I can't help how, I can't help that somebody will cross me. I can't help that. I can't, you know, prevent you from crossing me. But I can determine how many times you get that opportunity. You can't keep people from being disrespectful or from, or from, you know, just doing something that you don't like. That's life. But you can choose how many times they do it. For me, (laughs) you get to cross me one time. And when I say cross, I mean disrespect. It makes no sense for anybody to have to put up willingly put up with disrespectful behavior. That's a whole nother thing. Challenges is one thing. Being just disrespectful is a whole nother. I have family members whom I love dearly with my entire heart that have shown themselves disrespectful. And I have had to put up boundaries to protect myself. Let me tell you, you important enough to protect. You are important enough to shield. You are important enough to, al- to allow or not allow people in your space that don't know how to respect it. So if that's a friendship that, you, you, know, you know, I'm I'm just saying like, Giving up on people is is one thing, but setting boundaries and releasing folks into their own stuff, you do you, is 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 another. You see what I'm saying? Um, and you know, I'm not, I'm just saying, I don't I don't give people second and third chances to 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 be you know to cross me. I really I really don't. Now we can talk it out. I'm, I, I'll talk it out with you. I'll work it out. I'll see what we can do. But we have to have standards. We have to have like lines that can't be crossed. And that is something that you, you have to deter- and determine. And some people may say, you know what? But I feel like that's me abandoning them. No, it's not. Because the other person once they reach a boundary that they aren't, you know, they can't cross because that's what you put up. They then get the opportunity to evaluate their behavior. To say, oh no, so-and-so doesn't allow this in their space. So they can either choose to stay where they at or they can choose to adjust in order to get that invitation back. But you are worth Every boundary you need to set up to protect your peace in Jesus name. Okay. So, um, there is a, there is a, 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 just like a little experience that I want to share with you all about boundaries and about, um, standards. So, um, I remember (laughs) I'm trying to walk myself through this. Um, there was a, a situation to where I am, I'm in college, right? And I'm looking for off-campus housing, right? So me and a friend of mine, we were looking for off-campus housing together. And she had initially agreed to, um, roommate with these other two young ladies, but, there had begun, like God began to do like a really 
new thing in her life. And the basis, oh, come on now. The basis of the friendship that she had with the other two young ladies were, you know, they chilled together. They smoked together. They drink together. They party together, right? They they did recreational things that they enjoyed together. And so that's how they really became, you know, cool, right? Other things in common, I'm sure they did. Uh, but that was like the basis. They, they all was living that kind of lifestyle, right? So she changes her life up and rededicates to the Lord. And she's like, yo, I don't want to live with them and put myself in a position to where I'm going to be around stuff that makes me uncomfortable. Okay. So I'm going to, you know, tell them I won't be living with them. Kendra, let's, let's, you know, roommate together. Right. I'm like, cool. Now, excuse me. Um, we move in together and our basis in our friendship, how it began, we, um, we had a lot of, we had a lot of things in common, you know, similar backgrounds, born and raised in the church. Um, but on our own as adults, we were going to church. We were reading our Bibles. We were attending Bible study. So a lot of our friendship grew, um, on a spiritual Christian basis. That was the foundation that really took our friendship to like a new level, right? She, so loved it. So we we were living together and literally we're praying in the house together. We'll have Bible study together. She honestly, like still to this day was the best roommate I ever had, ever had. Like she was just amazing team player, just easy going like if and the thing about it is like if you live with somebody somebody they're gonna get on your nerves right I got on her nerves she got on mine and if we had to tell each other something we talked about it and still to this day was the best roommate I've ever had um however there was a turn of events there was a turn of events and um she went back to her old lifestyle and I noticed I would start, you know, smelling weed and I would start seeing things around the house that I was just like, uh, -uh." because before we moved in with each other, I let my standards be made known. I let my boundaries be made known. I don't, I don't smoke. I don't do smoke in the house. I don't like the smell of it. And there was some other stuff that I seen. I set that off jump. Like, this is what I don't do. This is, it's a no. It's a no for me. All of it. <laughs> In black and white. And she agreed. Right? However, there were some changes that she decided to make within herself. Still me holding up my my boundaries and my standards in this friendship I, I, we both, you know, could feel the tension, right? So I became, it was a shock to me because we agreed onto something, right? We had these, these boundaries and standards and we both agreed on. And just like that, out of nowhere to me, it was, it, it was a change. And Things started to become tense and I brought it up to her eventually because we both was getting on each other's nerves real bad. (laughs) And um, our conversation, she felt bad because we did agree on something. We had a certain standard within our household, but things changed. And my first thing was, okay, well, let me help you. Let's get back on the right track. Let's, you know, let's pray together some more. Let's do this Bible study and stuff. 
And we did, you know, we did. But at that time, it wasn't in her to do. And what I didn't realize at the moment is that as much of a of an encouragement that I wanted to be to her, her mind was made up on what she wanted to do. And there was nothing that I could do about it. I brought the scripture, I brought scriptures to her and I was like, I'm going to be your support. I'm going to have your back if you need me. No, but it's like, she didn't want me though. (laughs) She didn't want me to be there for her in that capacity because she wanted to do her own thing. She did. And I had to respect that. Not what was going on in the house. That had to be <laughs> that had to be taken care of and, and talked out. But I had to come to the realization of this is not where she is anymore. And so, you know, COVID happened and we ended up going, you know, back home and months and I'm I'm just Still, I'm I'm in a doozy like, what happened? <laughs> what happened? And why did it happen? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, we had such a great foundational, you know, setting in our friendship. We supported each other. It was great. Yeah, we had our, you know, little roommate um concerns and stuff, but it we talked it out and kept it moving. Like, still to this day, I promise you, she was the best roommate ever okay but there were just some things that eventually we didn't agree on I was doing one thing and she was doing another and we went like that and months and months later like eventually I just stopped thinking about it I get um, a text and she called and, um, she apologized about how things went on. And this is, this is one thing I wanted to say, and I feel like I'm going on a tangent, but this is going to help somebody. Um, when somebody comes to you and apologize, don't hold on to that. Release it in Jesus name receive it and move on yeah I was shocked I was super shocked that she called but moreover the work that I wanted to to perform in trying to help her God was doing it and I didn't even know God was working on her when we were separated we didn't went back to our own corners of, you know, wherever we from. But God was working on her heart. We can't change people. But God can. And for those believers that are watching and listening, yo, even though sometimes your words ain't, you know, won't change somebody, your lifestyle, the consistency of your lifestyle will bring respect, will bring honor and glory to God. You keep doing what the Lord has called you to do. You keep living holy. You keep living righteous. You keep living upright. You keep serving the Lord. And those people, I promise you, they're watching. And keep praying for them. Because we can't do the work. We can't, we can't change or save anybody. But keep living upright before, before God. And keep them in prayer. And watch God do the work. Just watch him. So, um, I hope <laughs> that that is helpful when it comes to the question that was submitted. Um, I just want to want folks to be encouraged that, you know, not everyone is going to receive who you are in Christ well, but God will send you someone to support you and God will send you people to cover you. Um, I will also encourage folks to get into community at your church, get into community somewhere where you are around a body of believers that are like-minded 
and that are supportive. Okay. Don't let Instagram friendships or Facebook friendships fool you because it is more important for you to set a standard um, and to live holy and righteously before God than have someone in your space that will contaminate you. Um, Amos 3 3 says, Do two walk together unless they have agreed to meet? It's like, do two people walk together? If they haven't agreed on the destination, how are you walking together and y'all walking into d- two different places? Like it, it just don't work, right? So be encouraged um, and, and, and stay prayerful before the Lord God will send you a supportive group. Um, that is all that I have for today. With all hearts and minds, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer. Thank you, God, for who you are. Thank you for being a mother to the motherless, a father to the fatherless, a friend to the friendless, God. I thank you for being a provider, a way maker. God, thank you for being every single thing that we need and more. God, I'm praying for everyone that is listening to this message. God, I pray that something encourages them. Something pushes them to go just a little bit further. Something stretches them and and challenges them, God, to continue to live for you no matter the responses of other people. God, I pray that you remind us that you are a friend to the friendless. That you are the best friend that anyone could ever have. And for those that are struggling to find human companionship, human friendships. God, I pray that you point them in the direction of a ministry, running into someone at a coffee shop, whatever it is, that your people are in line to support one another. And for those that are in toxic relationships or toxic friendships, God, I pray that you give us boldness to set standards of righteousness for our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all, that's the word on the street for this week. Y'all share this on Facebook or on Instagram or somebody. Send it to your mama, your cousin, Pookie and them, okay? Um, Let somebody else hear this message. Until next time, beautiful people, be blessed. (laughs) 